I want to share these thoughts on unlimited good and the necessity of miracle for human development. Foster is renowned for his description of traditional society's belief in limited good. This belief renders people, unfortunately, at each other's throats because anyone else is thriving is easily understood as a result as a taking away from a prosperity that you might have been enjoying yourself. Now the field of development studies has, at least until quite recently, taken religion as a kind of blood-sucking parasite in relation to, and by comparison with, its own secular efforts at helping people in the majority world to develop. That is to develop socially, economically and so on. According to this widespread popular theory, desirable social economic development arises as an outcome of the application of things like science, you know, technology, rationality, logic and so on. The application of these ways of thinking, these devices and processes, helps people to thrive by improving efficiency, like in the production, you know, production, producing things, organizing, consumption and so on of resources. Thus, limited resources could be turned into a kind of limitlessness, according to this theory. Science, technology, rationality and logic are said to thrive in an environment of secular modernity. Religion, on the contrary, has often been seen as introducing or representing a not rational side to life. As such, it has been taken as being a damper on, you know, compromising, taking effort away from and otherwise reducing presupposed positive impacts of secular modernity. Many examples could be given on how this might happen, such as the wasting of what might have been you know, productive time and resources and spent performing rituals, maybe an orientation to preparing for heaven and that orientation detracting people from investment into the communal good of a human community. Could be errors arising from reinterpreting rationality itself as if it is religious or magical in you know, all this kind of stuff. I here want to focus on just how someone or a people can move on from the at one time widespread if not universal pessimistic kind of human comprehension that the good is of necessity limited. In a sense what I want to ask is this, which comes first? Belief in unlimited good or evidence for unlimited good. That is, is effective long-term positive social change enabled through provision of relative unlimited supplies of good things? You know, is it going to happen through foreign aid? Or is it through convincing people who live in a context of a dearth of good that actually, thanks to God, the good is unlimited? This needs to be connected to the question, how in a very limited world, can people be convinced the good might be unlimited? A critical issue here pertains to the, you know, the widespread and wide impact of envy, I think, in traditional societies. We should ask, to what extent the belief in limited good has contributed to poverty or to violence? I believe it's widely considered to have been causative of poverty, as it had people perceiving the impossibility of abundance without theft. Yet theft itself and the desire for theft clearly orient people to violence as could mechanisms associated with envy, anger, you know, the desire for vengeance and all that. So all these um, limited into human trust. All of these contributed to curtailing the possibility of social economic development or growth. One metaphor for unlimited good in the Bible may be miracle, um, Greek dynamis or semeon. From the Exodus, Israel expected to accept living in the desert with only God providing, to 5,000 being fed from a, a few loaves by Jesus, sick being healed, the dead being raised. This is all a stretching of the boundaries of limitedness. Yet, of course, to modern contemporary development practitioners, these events seem to be exactly the problem, you know, the kinds of irrational supernatural nonsense 
that they're trying to get rid of seem to be represented in these events. Provision of outsized resources to people accustomed to shortage can, though, unintentionally, I suggest, result in outcomes that are unhelpful, like hoarding, aggravation of envy, secrecy, clan, tribalism. Related outcomes as a, out, as a result, civil war, fighting, poisonings, aggravated witchcraft, enmity, suspicion, source, secrecy, theft, disgust, you know, greed, crediting and blaming spirits, all this kind of stuff. That is to say, an outside source boost in resources available to community that was used to surviving by making sure that individuals did not thrive more than their colleagues can seriously aggravate intra-community tensions and enmity, I suggest. My perhaps counter-intuitional for many moderns thesis is that anticipation of miraculous provision may be the preferred mechanism, if not the only mechanism, that can actually enable a society to deal relatively peacefully with unlimited good. Miracles coming from God remove responsibility for greed or theft from beneficiaries. Though when they prosper, they, they can credit God for their prosperity. They're aware of explaining origins using the mysterious. They can permit rejoicing at someone else's prospering. That rejoicing to replace suspicion and hatred of those who are better on the assumption that their thriving is, you know, detracting from my thriving. Um, how though? How does one move you know, from praying for a miracle to expectation of miracle, miraculous provision, prospering without theft, fighting, killing, in their kind of normal run of things? The answer seems to be faith in God's ability to give, his love, his compassion, his desire for his children to prosper. That is, they, his desire for them to prosper even before they ask. The best way to help a community of people then is to convince them of what of God's love for them has demonstrated in exactly miraculous provision. We could add in addition an indication of the um, futility of requiring more bloodshed um, because well Jesus blood shed on the cross has been and is enough. So in short the thesis I'm proposing for discussion here is that Jesus' miracles were and are a means to encourage people to believe that the good is unlimited and by, that by these means they can escape the entanglements of envy and interhuman violence. The very entanglements that result so often in the problems we have today. Instead they can accept the kingdom of God, a kingdom in which God rules and love, not envy, um, is the way forward. Then, actually, a prosperity oriented faith in Christ might be seen as a necessary prerequisite for social, economic development of people in the majority world.